afternoon, Tampa Bay. Here we are once again on a Tuesday afternoon at the world headquarters of the DuPont Registry, Tampa Bay, and the other DuPont Registry auto homes books that are published right here in Tampa. We're actually on the northern edge of St. Petersburg, located just off of Ulmerton Road on Tech Drive in the Gateway area. As you know, we've been doing uh, broadcasts uh, on our podcast uh, almost every Tuesday uh, for the past year or so, and it was a year ago that we had somebody on board today to uh, talk to us about an upcoming event that is really one of the biggest, best events in Tampa Bay. It's the Tampa Bay Air Fest at MacDill Air Force Base. This is Tampa Bay Air Fest 2020, and today we have Major Justin Kellett, who is the director of the Tampa Bay Air Fest 2020, who's probably doesn't really have 30 minutes to come here and talk to us today because he's busy. Well, s certainly busy, but uh, always have time to get out in the community because this event is really about the Tampa Bay community uh, and to really encourage folks to come on out. So very happy to be here. Okay, so you're in the Air Force. So uh, did you join up right after high school? Uh, I, I did not. I went to uh, the University of Nebraska, I'm born and raised in Nebraska, uh, and did uh, Reserve Officer Training Corps there. Uh, for five years. And then uh, from that point, uh, got into the Air Force and, and went to pilot training. And went to pilot training. It's been a career. Yes. How many years in the Air Force so far? Uh, almost to 11. Almost to 11. Goodness gracious. Married? No yes. children? Nope. Enjoying the Tampa Bay area. Where else have you been stationed? So uh, have did short stints in Pensacola uh, and the middle of Oklahoma uh, for pilot training. And from there, I went to Dover, Delaware, where I was flying um, C-5 cargo aircraft, and uh, about four years ago, moved to the Tampa area uh, to fly the KC-135 air refueling aircraft. That's a big stratotanker thing that flies over the top of Tampa every once in a while. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so before we get to the air fest, uh, you fuel up and you got a full load of fuel to go refuel somebody. How far can you go? So... It just kind of depends. Uh, depends on how much gas the the other aircraft needs. Um, you draw out of the same tank. Same same exact tank. So if you weren't paying attention, you'd put all the fuel on the fighter that's being fueled, and you'd run out. That I mean, that in in theory, yes, that could happen. <laughs> that would not be great. That would not <laughs> be a I, good idea. I definitely need some of that gas to get home. That's right. That's right. So when you go to refuel based out of Tampa, do you go halfway around the world? Gen generally, no. Uh, especially when you see us flying around, uh, we are almost always participating in training for other aircraft. We're flying over towards uh, Louisiana and refueling B-52s or flying up towards Charleston, South Carolina and refueling C-17s uh, just so they get that practice. That way when the flag goes up and they get the call and they need to do it for real, um, they're they're ready to go. Sounds great. I'm I know you're prepared because I know you spend a lot of time training and teaching these other guys how to follow you around. Um, one of my uh, my places I like to go sit is a friend's house in Key West, and I know they're not Air Force, but watching those Navy fighter jets come in on a short turn mm -hmm. <laughs> with a quick approach to uh, Key West Air Force uh, Naval Air Base is really something else. They can make those planes turn, and they are noisy. You do not sleep in the afternoon. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. And uh, a great, you know. Segue from that, we're getting uh, some F-5s up from Key West, uh, some of their trainers that they use, and uh, some F-18s as well. So we'll, even though it is an Air Force uh, air show, we'll have uh, aircraft from all the branches uh, represented. Okay, so let's switch to the air show this year on March 28th and 29th, the official dates from 8 in the morning to 4 in the evening. That's correct. Uh, quite, a, quite a weekend of activity, I imagine, the traffic pattern on the ground around MacDill is going to be pretty complex. It, it, it will be. Uh, so MacDill Air Force Base has four uh, gates to get in and out. Uh, starting at 8 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday, the, the Tanker Way, uh, MacDill Gate, and the main Dale Mabry Gate will be open for the public to come on in. Uh, for those folks that have a DOD ID card, they can use the Bayshore Gate. Uh, but no, you know, what I really want to get out there is that is only for those DOD ID card holders uh, or uh, those that are on a... Uh, special sponsor pass. So your Florida license, your passport, and your uh, concealed weapons carry won't get you in that gate. They will not get you in that <laughs> gate, unfortunately. All right. Well, be sure and use those other gates for if you're going to the air show. And one of the things that's different about this from a lot of other activities these coming weeks and weekends over the next year is this is free. It, absolutely. Um, we this, this is about you guys. It's about Tampa Bay. It's about getting, uh, showing you what your taxpayer dollars go to for one, but also to, to say thank you and 
to make sure that as many people can come as possible, it's free. Okay, and you have some sponsors, the local businesses in town. You got any of them on the top of your mind we need to mention, give them some uh, recognition? Uh, our, our biggest main sponsor that we have right now, uh, Ford, uh, is is coming in a big way, and they're going to have a nice big display. Um, but we have sponsors from all over the Tampa Bay area, uh, and um, specifically Yingling uh, is, is a big one for us this year. They're actually world debuting their new flight beer, uh, at Tampa Bay Air Fest. Flight beer at Flight. the Tampa Bay Air Fest. Yes, and uh, you'll be able to get it in bottles all over the, the area soon, but the, the very first time and maybe the only time you'll ever be able to get it in a keg uh, will actually be at, at Air Fest. And probably the only time you'll be able to get it on an Air Force base. That That is true. <laughs> so um, give us a general overview of the day here. It starts in the morning. Got a lot, the, uh, the public has the ability to visit on a lot of different aircraft, walk around and see them? Yes, that's correct. So uh, gates will open at 8 a.m. Uh, we'll get you in. We'll get you parked. Uh, please bear with us. Uh, it's so well attended that, that uh, it does take a little time to get you in. Um, but once you're there, uh, any aircraft that's on the ramp, we'll have giant cargo aircraft. We'll have fighter aircraft. We'll have uh, trainer aircraft. Any aircraft you want to look at uh, will be out there. The crews will be there, and they'll be able to talk to you about what they do. Uh, and that will be from... Uh, 8 a.m. all the way through the end of the show at 4, um, but really where it gets fun is at about 11.30. Uh, at that point, we'll have the national anthem. The uh, SOCOM paracommandos will jump in uh, with the American flag, and the aerial demonstrations begin. Okay, you're going to have the B-1 bomber there? The B-1 bomber will be there. I was on that uh, a year ago at the, at the Air Fest. Um, I'm almost too big to get up in that little teeny cockpit. <laughs> It, it is. It's not it's comfortable. A tight squeeze. <laughs> it's, it's a very tight space up there for such a big airplane. Well, that's really exciting. And the same thing repeats on Sunday, pretty much. Yes, the exact same show. Obviously, everything's weather dependent. Um, uh, so depending on if there's clouds or, or rain, it could uh, slightly change the timing of the acts. Um, but right now, what we're tracking on is still that. Yeah, so for 11. those of you tracking this from uh, out of state, you know that in Tampa, it's 75 and sunny every day. You may be where it's cold and rainy and dark, but not here. No. This is the best weather in the country, and we're going to have it just right for the uh, Tampa Bay Air Fest. So l let's talk about some of your uh, guest uh, aviation uh, guests here. The Blue Angels? Absolutely. So the Even Blue though they're Navy. Even though they're Navy, uh, <laughs> they they will go around to all the shows. They love coming to our show because it's a, it's a short uh, hop for them to come down from Pensacola. Uh, but they are an outstanding act. They were here in 2018 as well. Uh, and uh, just just a, a great time. So they're uh, the headline, obviously, and they will uh, take off at 3 o'clock. At 3 o'clock? Yes. Okay, I know a number of people to go out in, on their boat and just sit out in the water and watch everybody come and go from a distance out there. It's hardly a distance, though. They come it, by close. They, they, they do, um, and for those that do want to come in and watch on a boat, uh, just understand that for security reasons, there are pylons out around the peninsula uh, by McDill. Uh, so... That is as far as you can get close to the base, uh, and uh, we are happy to have you out there, um, but just, just know that there are restrictions uh, and not to go too far. And if you go inside the pylons, you might all of a sudden be grabbed by an underwater demolition team. Your boat will sink. Well, so you don't know, do that. I, I, I don't want to give up their secrets. So. <laughs> and who else is coming? Canadians? Uh, no, no Canadians. No um, Canadian snowbird. They were no, originally, originally e-blast, so yeah, not this time. Not this time. I don't time. know what a snowbird does for Canada. The, they're essentially the, the Canadians' Blue Angels, okay. um, but uh, the Blue Angels are and better. Who's going to show off from the Air Force? So the F-22, our fifth-generation fighter team, will be here. Uh, they put on a great show. They were also here in 2018. Uh, be ready with some earplugs. They are loud, but it is a, an awesome show. And uh, a late ad was actually the F-16 demo team as well uh, is going to come out. Terrific. They're also loud. They are also loud. Yeah. I have earplugs, so I'll bring them with me if I if I can make it this with that weekend. And so, um, if I recall, there's an opportunity for you to pick up some um, some uh, badges and emblems from some of the fighter groups and uh, uh, the B one bomber group. I think I got one uh, the last time at an air show. Sure, um, many of the static aircraft that will come out uh, will have some things that you can pick up, uh, whether it's coins or patches or, or stickers just to show your support uh, for those folks. Talk to us for a minute about the coin. That's a pretty important thing in the military. Yes. Yeah, so, so the military challenge coin is a tradition that goes back, I think, centuries. I'm not 100% on the exact 
uh, start of it. But basically, uh, the challenge coin was given from a commander to uh, somebody that had performed above and beyond um, their their calling and and were exceptional at what they did. And it was just a sign of appreciation um, to to show that your commander uh, or somebody else was was seeing the great work you were doing. And now that's a, um, uh, the coin is something you hand off from a leader of a squadron or a unit uh, that gets, uh, has their own particular emblem on it. Yes, every, every coin is different. Uh, I, I look to, I've got a small coin collection myself, you know, every, everybody does. And, and uh, it's, some of it is squadron pride and squadrons you've been in. And some of it, you know, if you go support another unit, they may, they may recognize you with a coin for, for work for them. It's a great tradition in the uh, in all the armed forces. I know the Navy has some. I've got a special forces uh, coin from years ago when I visited the base, and um, I'm up probably to about eight, probably a lot less than you. That's great. Well, just just make sure you don't drop it because uh, if you drop it, you got to buy a round. <laughs> <laughs> so don't drop it in a bar. Don't don't drop and it in you a don't bar. Mean a round of ammo. You no, mean I mean yeah. I mean a round for the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. Let's talk a little bit about McDill. Acres, airplanes, people, okay. big operation. So de- definitely a big operation. Uh, and one of the, the interesting things about McDill is that we actually host two combatant commands. SOCOM and CENTCOM are both located there. Uh, so the, the wing itself, the 6th Air Refueling Wing, uh, is a little under 4,000 folks. Um, wow. But in terms of people on the base and our 32 mission partners on top of the combatant commands, uh, it is well into the tens of thousands uh, that, that work there every day. Um, for the refueling wing side of things, we've got uh, 24 KC-135s um, that, that fly with two flying squadrons, plus a, a reserve air refueling squadron as well. Um, and they they work together to go out and, and uh, make the refueling mission happen. And uh, other airplanes based on the aircraft based on... At McDill, just the refueling just, wing? Just the refueling. Uh, we recently, um, uh, due to some, some budgetary shifts and, and things at the DOD, we had executive airlift support for the, the four-star commanders, some Gulf Streams that were there. Uh, but uh, those are now uh, located at other bases. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say that, uh, that for SOCOM and CENTCOM, there must be a lot of coming and going of what we would call executive uh, transport for, to keep the generals on yes. schedule. Yes, keeps them on schedule, but it, it, it also provides them um, with some communication capabilities that they wouldn't have if they were flying Delta, we'll say. Yeah, and they probably are more on time than Delta and Southwest. <laughs> well, I, I... Or at least fly on their own <laughs> schedule, that's yes, for sure. Yes, absolutely. The, their, their schedules are quite dynamic. Okay, so uh, let's come back to the timing here. March 28th and 29th, Saturday and Sunday. Yes. A couple weeks out. And it's going to be very exciting. And and knowing the impact of McDill on the uh, on the Tampa Bay Area community, with the number of people you talk about that come and go, aircraft, um, uh, financial activity, as well as commercial activity, it's really the Tampa Bay Area that needs to thank the Air Force for being here, um, because we spend a lot of time when we're involved in business thanking big businesses for expanding, whether it's Jabel or or Tico or. Uh, it doesn't mean one of the banking concerns that relocates a head of court headquarters here. It's important that we recognize that employers um, are are critical to the expansion and 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 the health of this Bay Area, and certainly McDill, uh, the Air Force Base, and the investment that the Air Force has there and the U.S. government has there is is to the benefit of this entire community. And uh, it's always fun to me to come in when I am flying commercial. If we come in and land from the south. I want to be on the right side of the plane because I want to see what's going on at McDill. I want to I want to see how many tankers are there and where the old pads are and uh, so forth. There's um, in order to keep you guys relaxed and comfortable, you got a golf course down there, right? We we do actually. Uh, we have two golf courses at McDill uh, right now. There's uh, the north and the south course. Um, unfortunately, uh, busy planning Air Fest, I haven't been able to to get out on the links as much as I'd like. But uh, uh, yeah, they're. They're great, great golf courses. The South Course, especially, uh, is is quite outstanding. Um, one one of the best that the Department of Defense has to offer. So and and a beach club too, I think. The, we do we do have a, a small beach down on the base. Uh, we have a, a uh, I guess you could call it a, a tiki tiki bar, if you will, <laughs> uh, that's down there. And uh, just to to be able to let our, our folks, you know, let off some steam and also 
uh, we have a brand new five story uh, lodging building we've built, and uh, it's almost always full with the uh, folks getting away to go on vacation and, and take some R and R when they have that chance for the military. So they can stay right on the base, get a little R and R, go to the beach, play a little golf, and relax. Absolutely. Well, we want you guys relaxed because every once in a while you're going to be called on, whether it's practice or real, to get up on your tiptoes and get going. Yes. All right. Let's see. Another couple of questions I had in my mind. When you fly the big um, uh, KC-135 uh, refueling tankers, how many crew on board? So generally, uh, just three on board, two pilots and a boom operator. So the two pilots, uh, you know, get the plane where it needs to be. And the boom operator does the real hard job, which is to actually give the gas to the aircraft behind him. So, And he's in the back of the plane. He's in the back of the plane, uh, laying on his stomach, uh, watching uh, a face full of airplane come up to meet him. Yeah, and coming up real close, and he's smiling at the pilot who's a- looking right at him. Absolutely, because and, and that pilot's smiling right back because he wants that gas. <laughs> I'm sure people will see this on the day because you'll be able to walk around the tanker, but the actual boom has little wings on it so he can maneuver it around, right? It does. Uh, they call them uh, rudder vaders, actually. Rudder rudder, vader. rudder vaders, yes. So sort of like an elevator and a rudder all combined into one. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, yeah, so the, the boom operator actually uh, is fully manually controlled. Uh, there's no autopilot for, for that thing, and he's got a joystick uh, in each hand making sure that uh, the, the boom goes where it needs to go. And then it connects to the, uh, to the aircraft you're refueling, and he lets go because they're going to stay connected. Uh, he actually doesn't let go. Oh, he does? So, yeah. so he, he doesn't have to do anything once it is connected. Uh, however, in the event of an emergency where the other aircraft would get too close or something would happen, it. he's got to have his hands at the ready. Well, the only reason I know about this stuff is when I was about 12 years old, uh, there was a uh, open day at the Dover Air Force Base, and there was a refueling wing there back then. Mm. And I went in, and they let me climb up in the plane and lie down on my stomach and look out the back. At the ground, not not up in the air. <laughs> right, we weren't flying, and uh, it wasn't that comfortable. It's it's not, uh, <laughs> especially you know I, I'm not a super tall person, so I, I feel a little bit better. But when you have a boom operator that's uh, you know a, a bigger bigger individual, they kind of have to cram in there. I bet they do. So well, that's interesting, and I'm sure people get a chance to look at it. So most unusual aircraft are you going to have? Um, Anything really special besides the B-1 and the KC-135s? So we will have uh, probably one that has the, one of the coolest missions. In, it's from uh, Air Force Special Operations Command. It's going to be a MC-130. Uh, I think it's a Combat Talon is, is the name of it. They do all sorts of crazy, um, spooky things. So definitely talk to those, those pilots and crew members when they're there. Um, but uh, other than that, we'll have... Um, the uh, E3, which is our airborne early radar system, commonly known as the AWACS. So that's a pretty cool plane. It's got a big radar dome on top of it. Uh, the big looks pancake pre- up in the air yes, on top so of it. Yes, so it looks pretty interesting. So uh, definitely keep uh, keep your eyes on tampabayairfest.com uh, because we'll constantly update the list of the static displays that we have coming in and uh, uh, all of the great information uh, that you want to know about Tampa Bay Air Fest okay, will be so there. I think the Marines fly this plane, and I noticed just the other day I was reading about a commercial version of it, and it's the one that comes in at a very high rate of speed, and then the wings tilt up, and the propellers go vertical, and it actually can drop down and land. Oh, um, Is it an Orion or something like that? Oh, the um, the Osprey? The Osprey. The CB-22? Yeah. Yes, so we, we had one of those uh, and initially, and, and we were really excited that they were going to come in, but... Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, as with world events, as they do, they were they were pulled away. Unfortunately, um, so we're not going to get one of those this oh, time. Oh, that's a shame because that's an interesting airplane. It, it is a very cool airplane. Yes, yeah. it was uh, up in New England. I think it was a, a day or two before the uh, uh, New York City Air Fest uh, and ship uh, uh, a military review on the Hudson. Uh, there was a unit up there, and uh, one of them had the day off, but they needed to burn some fuel or get some hours. And where I was in eastern Long Island Sound, they came by close uh, to say hello to family and friends <laughs> and then go back. And we were we were on the lookout, and all of a sudden it comes streaking up the sound and then goes nice and slow overhead and then turns around and goes back. Uh, uh, it was it, It's quite an aircraft. Um, we've got a number of, uh, of uh, military retirees in this area, and yes. I'm sure there, a bunch of them are here because they're connected to McDill, but... This has always been an active retirement community for military personnel. Uh, we're happy to have them, uh, to be able to thank them every day when we see them in the grocery store or wherever else for their commitment to our country. And uh, 
it's made a great place to live because you got solid citizens. And for some reason, the people coming out of the military know that they still have payback time and they help out in the community. So uh, it's been a great uh, pleasure for me to meet a number of them and participate in a number of charitable events that they participate in, fundraisers for wounded warriors and uh, those kinds of things. So we're, we're, we're grateful to have the presence here. So we're getting close to our time limit, and I want to make sure that everybody listening today and after we put it up on our podcast and on YouTube and it's been edited, everybody knows exactly where they're going. So I'm going to ask you for the entrance roads again for the Tampa Bay Air Fest at McDill Air Air Force Base. We didn't have one in, we did have one in 2018, but not 19. Yes, that's correct. Is it going to be every other year going forward, you you think? Generally, it will be every other year. Uh, It takes a lot uh, to put on on the Air Fest and uh, we also want to make sure that it is going to be um, the best show for us to say thank you. So going every other year allows us to ensure that we have the Thunderbirds or the Blue Angels uh, every time and that we get um, the the best performers to come out. So uh, that's the main the, reason. The, the only thing that's going to be missing would be... Um, uh, uh, the presidential plane, which if it came by, that would create a real traffic jam. It would. That... <laughs> Air Force you're, One. You're giving me heart palpitations right now <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> I've been up close uh, because I flew in and out of Palm Beach one time and it was sitting right there on, on the ramp. Uh, and when you're even in a, in a normal-sized executive jet or small aircraft, um, um, propeller aircraft, it is enormous. Yes, the 747 that they've got is uh, – it is – it's quite big. the aircraft. Now, is it actually bigger than a KC-135, or the 135 is a little bit bigger, I would think? Oh, no, no, no. The uh, Air so Force One is, is much bigger. bigger. Really? Yes. Uh, I would not double the size, but it's wow. it's significantly bigger. That's amazing. So, once again, the entrance, and what time can we start coming in in the morning? So, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning is when the gates will open up. Um, from previous experience, uh, I know that uh, folks start getting lined up pretty early. Um, uh, so definitely get, get in line, uh, as soon as you can and, and what makes sense for you. Uh, but 8 AM, uh, the gates will officially open, uh, and then, uh, the show will end about four o'clock when the blue angels finish up their, their performance. Okay, so, and the entrance roads are, so the, the main entrance roads, uh, are going to be Dale Mabry. Uh, they'll have, uh, the gates fully opened up for, for inbound traffic on that road, uh, McDill Avenue, uh, inbound. And then that will go outbound only at the end of the show. And then. Uh, Tanker Way Gate, uh, which is sort of halfway in between Dale Mabry and West Shore, uh, just off of Inner Bay, uh, are the three main gates to come in. Okay, so here's what you do early on Saturday or Sunday morning. Well, Sunday there, I don't think they're open that early. You go to Krispy Kreme, get your donuts, get a cup of hot coffee, and if they open at 6, go at 6.05, and then you can go down and, and watch the sunrise and uh, get in line and uh, have the donuts, talk to your neighbors. Yep, and uh, who are there right in the car with you or in the car next to you. <clears throat> and the gates will open at 8 on Saturday and Sunday morning. It's going to be a great, great show, as it always is. And we're so grateful that you and the military and at McDill take time and make the effort to make it um, absolutely, totally inviting. Plenty of food and plenty of bathrooms on, on site. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we'll have any kind of food that you can imagine that will be served. Uh like I said, we have the flight beer from, from Yingling uh, being debuted, and then Budweiser as well will be out there. Uh, and uh, additionally to that, plenty plenty of bathrooms. We're going to have uh, 240 uh, portable portable uh, bathrooms out there, all with Purell, plenty of Purell in there. Uh, and then additionally, um, you know, 40 sets of hand-washing stations to make sure everybody uh, uh, feels good about their, their time out there. Well... Major Kellett, thank you for visiting with us today. We hope uh, that it's going to be good weather, uh, which I'm sure it will be. We don't even have to hope. We're going to make sure it's good weather and that you get a great crowd and it's a great show. And thank you very much for putting the show on and thanks for visiting with us today. And thank you very much for having us on. Please come out to Tampa Bay Air Fest. Don't forget tampabayairfest.com for any questions uh, about what uh, you can bring in and any questions about the show. So be sure and uh, recognize this too. If you get this uh, podcast and you've had a chance to listen to it, share it with all your friends because they're going to want to know about this Airfest too. So all you have to do is push that share button and say, I'm going, and it'll go out everywhere and we'll get a big crowd to understand what's up and be able to thank the Air Force and the rest of the uh, uh, military guests on site for the day. So once again, it's Tom DuPont with the DuPont Registry Tampa Bay from the World International Headquarters. Uh, the DuPont Registry, located just off of Ulmerton Road in the Gateway area, 
North St. Pete. Thanks for listening in with us today. So all I can tell you is go out and make it a great day, Tampa Bay. 